So now I'm going to take a listen to your, actually we'll take a look at your chest first. So let me uncover you. And first I want to inspect just his chest and see any kind of chest movement that might be unusual. And of course, I also have already checked his vital signs and assessed his respiratory rate. Just by inspecting, I can see uh, if there are any abnormalities going on, any paradoxical chest movement where maybe one part is moving um, in a different direction from the other one or if everything is okay. I also want to make sure that I palpate his chest because if there was any subcutaneous emphysema, I couldn't... Um, I couldn't detect that unless I'm palpating his chest. And subcutaneous emphysema is something that a patient can have if they had air escaping the lungs into the pleural cavity, such as we would see in a normal thorax. And so by just palpating, I feel, make sure that there's no abnormalities. I can also check for any kind of lumps or anything like that. And these, the subcutaneous emphysema would feel like, like rice krispies underneath the skin. Once you've touched it, you really know exactly, you will know exactly what I mean. So we've inspected, we've palpated. Now I'm going to percuss his chest. And I have a, a special, a certain video on percussion techniques. So I'm not gonna go into too much of an explanation here. But again, just like with auscultation, I want to compare the left side and the right, making sure that the sounds are nice and hollow because underneath the chest, the chest wall, we have the lungs and they are filled with air. So they're going to be nice and hollow. And just watch the other uh, percussion video that I have right there. So now I've done my inspection, palpation, percussion, and now I'm going to go ahead and auscultate. Whenever I place my stethoscope on your chest, please take a nice deep breath in and out through the nose. Go ahead. starting to get lightheaded. I'm sorry? I'm starting to get lightheaded. Okay, that's actually quite normal because I'm having you take some nice deep breaths. So I'll just slow down the, the speed, the way that I'm going down on your chest, okay? Okay. Are you feeling a little better now that we just talked? Just a little, yeah. Okay, good. So take a nice slow deep breath. And again. So lungs are nice and clear. Are you still dizzy or are you okay? I'm okay. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to just listen to your heart. So I'd like for you to just breathe nice and normally, okay? Okay, good. Thank you. And one more thing I want to do is I want to check your chest excursion, which basically means the way that your lungs inflate. So I'm going to place my hands right here on your chest and take a nice deep breath. Okay, good. And do that again. We'll make sure we'll do this nice and slow. Are you doing okay or are you dizzy? I'm okay. Okay. And then one more time. So I'm checking here that every time he inhales, my hands move in a symmetrical way with his chest wall. And so his chest wall movement is okay here with the chest excursion. Now I also need to assess your back. Um, is it okay? Is it better for you if you sit up or roll onto your side? I can sit up. Okay, great. Let's do that. So now I'm going to check the chest excursion here again. So take some nice deep breaths. It's always a little bit more visible towards the bottom. 
And one more time. Good. So if there was some underlying pathology or maybe some consolidation underneath one side, it would not um, possibly not uh, be equal on the chest excursion here. And so then again, I want to palpate and see if I can feel any abnormalities here. And theoretically, you could do both sides at the same time. It's just a little bit more practical, I think, to do one side um, at a time and notice if there's anything unusual. And so now that we have done the inspection, I'm going to auscultate. So nice deep breath again whenever I touch my stethoscope. I'll just make sure that I go a little bit slower so you don't feel dizzy. And if you feel dizzy, just let me know. Okay, so uh, one thing on the auscultation on the respiratory system, whenever you listen to a patient's lungs, make sure that you follow in this left to right version from the top to the bottom and make sure that you get all the way out to the sides here to hear the lateral chest, specifically because on the right side we have um, three lobes rather than on the left side where we only have two. And on the right side, there's a middle lobe here that you really can't hear from below. And if you miss listening to the side here, you could miss an abnormality and the right middle lobe pneumonia is fairly common. So make sure that you always follow it and then move out to the sides and listen to the mid axillary line here on both sides. So now that I'm done with auscultating, I'm going to percuss again. Again, going in this methodical way, staying away from any bony prominences such as the scapula and the ribs, making sure that I hear this hollow sound underneath. And so I'm done with my inspection, palpation, auscultation, and the percussion. I've done a little bit out of order, but I got them all done. Okay, let's have you lay back down. <laughs> 